the opposition leaders challenging the Prime Minister to a debate on nuclear energy. He says he's happy to have it anywhere, go to the press club and have it there. The government says his argument doesn't stack up. He believes it does. He, th he thinks 100% renewables will see industry leave our shores. Uh, is it something that the government needs to do, is face up to this discussion with the opposition leader and, and have this debate? Kieran, the problem with, with nuclear is you're looking at at least 10 to 15 years before any of that generation capacity comes online. Last Thursday, the temperature of the water in Sydney uh, off the coast hit 26 and a half degrees. It's never been that hot since the history of records have been kept in Sydney. Um, so we've got an urgent situation where we need to take stronger action on climate change and that involves a transition, a gradual transition to renewables and the phasing out of fossil fuels. The country can't afford to wait 10 to 15 years. Uh, and that's the problem with the coalition solution. You're asking the Australian people to wait an unreasonable amount of time. And then if that generation did come online, it's more expensive. So Why you'd be asking the, the Australian people Why not to pay the more. the moratorium at least? Because the, the, the moratorium exists under the environment uh, legislation and there are still issues around uh, the storage of waste associated with that. Um, but you also have this issue of the delay that would occur if we were to go down that path when the government has a policy of a clear transition to renewables that we are putting in place and that is working. So we've got a clear plan. We know that we can get there uh, with solar, with wind, uh, with hydrogen, with battery storage um, and other Peter new forms of renewables. 100% renewables is not realistic, that no other country is doing it. What do you say to that? And that's why we're saying that, that gas uh, will continue to play an important role in that transition into the future. Uh, you're starting to see a lot more households um, and businesses uh, put solar and batteries on their rooftops. Uh, that means that they're becoming self-sustainable. Um, so... That, that, that um, load on the, on the system is reducing, but we're able to generate more through renewables to make that transition in an orderly fashion. And when that's happening, you simply can't afford to stop that process and say, let's invest in a technology that won't be online for 15 years. We don't have time. Just finally on the aged care report out today, the fundamental point here is people need to will need to pay more where they can for their care, given the de the demographic challenges this nation faces. Elderly Australians, wealthier elderly Australians, will have to pay more for their care. That's the fundamental outcome of this, isn't it? No, it's not. The Aged Care Task Force report makes it very clear that they're not recommending uh, an, a levy or any increases in taxes, and the government. Uh, is not going to be increasing taxes. Uh, we want to make sure that the aged care system is sustainable. Because of Australia's population demographics, uh, we know that the number of people over the age of 65 will double over the next 40 years and the number of people over the age of 85 will triple. That's going to be uh, a big impost on the system and we need to make sure that we plan now to make that system sustainable. So we'll work methodically through these recommendations comes on the back of yep. the reforms that the government's already undertaken. Uh, we've increased wages for people working in the sector. We've put nurses back into aged care facilities. We've increased the quality of the food, more one-to-one -one time between carers and their residents. So we've already put some measures in place. This report will build on that and will respond accordingly. Mm. Matt Thistlethwaite, appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Kieran.